In this video, I'm going to give you three core learning principles that you can literally use and apply right now to help you learn anything so fast that people think you're a genius. Because the thing is, once I started actually applying these three learning principles that I'm about to teach you in this video, I got three A stars and one A in my A-level exams, and I'm currently studying. I graduated as valedictorian, and I'm currently studying at the University of Hong Kong right now. These tips are the foundation to any successful learning system out there. So whatever learning system you're planning on creating after this video, you need to have these three core principles in mind. So without further ado, let's get into the video. The first thing that I'm trying to convey to you with this cursed skull emoji picture is that learning is not supposed to be easy. Learning is actually, in fact, quite the opposite. Learning is actually supposed to be really, really challenging. And if you're not challenging your brain enough, that's not learning. So imagine like you're trying to learn something new. For example, let's say that you wanted to learn how to shoot a basketball. Assume that you don't know how to shoot one before. If you start first learning to how to shoot the basketball, the first shot that you will make is probably going to brick and completely airball. Airball means like the ball didn't touch the net and you feel like an absolute failure. So that's how learning is supposed to be. But the more you shoot the basketball, the more you kind of keep shooting and practicing your shot, the better you are going to get at it. So what I'm, trying to under, what I'm trying to say with this is that learning is not supposed to be easy. I remember when I first started learning how to play lacrosse, it's kind of like, uh, basically it's kind of like this really long stick with the head and uh, you kind of have to put the ball inside the head and you need to cradle it to uh, move around and stuff. The first time I held the stick, I didn't know how to actually hold it. I was like, okay, do I hold it here? Do I hold it here? Like, how do I, how do I even grab the head of the stick? And how do I even, where do I even put the ball? The, that was the first thought that came into my mind. And I didn't know how to use it. How, I didn't know how to play lacrosse at all. But over time, as I kept practicing and practicing my lacrosse skills, I started to get better and better at the game. And that's how you are supposed to learn. It doesn't matter if you're learning a new sport. This can literally be applied to studying a new subject. So at first, if you start one chapter of A-level maths, for example, and you're really, really struggling, that's completely okay. That's not a problem because learning is supposed to be a struggle and that's how you actually learn. Which leads us to the second point, which is learning is just like a video game. And if it's not like a video game, you're you're doing it wrong. Because learning is supposed to be actually fun. Let me explain. When you first start to play a video game, right? You probably wouldn't go and watch like 50 different tutorials on how to actually play the video game. No, you would actually go into the game, start playing the game, die, make mistakes, and actually have fun while playing the game. It's the exact same with studying. And the mindset shift that I need you to make at the end of this video is that learning through doing is the best way to learn. Learning not through watching 50 different tutorials on YouTube, but learning through actually playing the video game is what's going to give you the most results in the least amount of time. So learning by doing makes learning fun. When you learn by doing, when you learn by, by when you study by doing past papers and practice questions, over time, you start to become better and better at learning and studying. And that makes you feel extremely confident. It gives you this really big confidence boost where you know that you can actually learn and like understand the material now. Like you've already mastered the material. So you're not scared of it when you go into the exam and it boosts your exam confidence by so much. So you need to be learning by doing. By the way, if you want the full study system that I used to get three A stars and one A in my A levels, and that I'm currently still using right now in university, then you might want to check out my community. It's linked down below. It's called A Star Students. I, it's basically this mentorship program where I help students just like you get better grades in less time through a proven step-by-step -step system. So if you're interested, click the link down below and join the community. So the last core learning principle that you absolutely must know 
is that your brain is very, very good at forgetting information. Not remembering, forgetting information. So now I want you to imagine that your brain is kind of like this glass container where there's like so much holes inside it and the water keeps flowing out continuously. The water represents how much information you actually remember when you're first exposed to the material. So like when you go to class and stuff. So now what's actually scientifically happening is that there's this thing called the forgetting curve where your brain actually loses information slowly, actually not slowly, but very quickly over time. So within the first day, let's say you go to class on, let's say you go to class on day zero, right? You go to class and you learn the material and you think that you've learned it. But actually after one day, the amount of information that you remember drops all the way down to 50%. And with our current levels of attention spans right now, this information, the amount of information that we actually remember probably drops all the way down to like 10% if I'm being completely honest. So the only way to combat this forgetting curve is to repeatedly test ourselves over time. So I'm gonna draw two extra lines to kind of illustrate to you what I'm talking about. When we test, when we test ourselves again, like one day after we learn the material, we bring the amount of information that we remember all the way up to 100%. So testing actually brings the bar all the way up to the top. And what you'll notice actually is that when you test yourself after spacing for one day, the curve actually becomes like flatter and flatter. So let's say you tested yourself on day one, then again, you tested yourself on day two, then you tested yourself on day five or something. What ends up happening is that the curve actually becomes flatter and flatter and flatter. In other words, the gradient becomes flatter and it becomes a lot easier for you to put the information into long-term memory. And that's what you want. Long-term memory is super important. You ever been into an exam and you see the question and you're just like, oh, okay, I got this. I, I completely understand this question already. I already know how to do it. I don't even have to think. Well, that's because your brain has gotten so good at memorizing the information that it's stored in long-term memory. And that's what you want on the exam. So from my personal experience, the easiest way to implement space repetition is through this flashcard app called Remnote. Remnote is honestly a, such a good tool. I can link it down in the description. I'm not sponsored or anything, but it's honestly so, so powerful because it's this flashcard app where it basically spaces all of the cards for you using this concept of the forgetting curve. So you literally have this all spaced out for you neatly. The second thing that you could also do is to create a revision calendar. Now I have this revision calendar uh, in my community, A Star Students, but basically how it works is you schedule your revision days out in advance, like what subjects you're going to do and what you're going to actually study. You do this in advance and what ends up happening is that you get a clear big picture of what you're actually going to study in the next week or two weeks or three weeks. This is honestly so powerful if you're using this the days leading up to an exam. And automatically, when you space your revision out using a revision calendar, you're automatically using spaced repetition. So the second tip that I have for you to combat this leaky brain is that you could use something called interleaving. So this is what interleaving means. So I'm gonna explain you, you so I'm going to explain to you what interleaving means in a very easy to understand way. Let's say you have four chapters that you have to study for math. What most schools would do is that every single time they will go through each chapter, they will ask you to practice questions from that chapter and that chapter only. That is a big mistake because what I found from reading tons of learning books is that mixing these topics together is actually much more effective at helping you remember information long term. So what so this is how I used to actually study. So chapter 1, I would do as many questions on chapter 1 as possible. Then when we would 
jump to chapter two. I would do only questions from chapter two. Then I would just repeat that until I finished the entire syllabus. Now I realize that that's actually not the best way to do it. The best way, and this is according to science, is that you mix and match these subjects all together so that when you're studying, you're not only studying one subject or one topic at once. So what it looks like is that the next time you do a study session, you could weave in questions from multiple topics to uh, kind of include in your overall study session. So right now you're probably thinking, if I need to understand this material, I need to get mastery of each topic at a time. But let me tell you, that's actually a false belief. You probably think that doing multiple topics at once is a bad idea. But let me tell you, yes, it seems like a really bad idea and that, oh, you're going to be hopping from one topic to the other topic and you'll know what you're going to do and like your brain's going to be all scrambled and stuff. That's actually a good thing because according to learning science, when you mix multiple topics together at once and you try to do them instead of focusing on one topic at a time, your brain actually makes connections between these topics. So your brain literally makes so many different connections between these topics. And that's how you actually remember the information and put it into long-term memory much more easily. So space repetition is kind of like the tool that you can use to put information into long-term memory. But interleaving is another special tool that you can use to make sure that whenever you test yourself, you're actually maximizing the amount of information you remember. So like this, because what, because realistically, every single time we test ourselves, what ends up happening is that oh, we don't really go up to 100%. It's more like 60 or 70%. But I warn you though, with this method, you're going to seem stupid at first. You're going to think, oh, why can't I actually understand this? But over time, I guarantee you, the rewards are insanely, insanely high. Imagine you're trying to learn how to improve your shooting ability in basketball. Interleaving is like going to multiple different parts of the court and actually practicing shooting from many different parts of the basketball court. And that is probably going to increase your overall shooting ability much more than if you just practice shooting free throws, for example. So that's the three core learning principles that will literally help you learn anything so fast that people think you're a genius. I hope you got tons of value from this video. And as always, may God guide us on the right path and I'll see you in the next video.